The enemy transportation corps has moved from Cobalt Cave to Archelon Fortress. Our sources have confirmed our suspicions that the cargo was indeed an HPM. It'll most likely be used to defend Archelon Fortress. The new weapon under development at Cobalt Cave has been relocated to Archelon Fortress. So we should be able to reduce the weapon's accuracy by disabling the satellite ground control center at Cobalt Cave. With the bulk of the enemy forces shifted to Archelon Fortress, the enemy poses little threat at Cobalt Cave. However, with the threat that Fenrir poses, we must take this opportunity to minimize its capabilities. Destroy all of the satellite antennas at Cobalt Cave.
complete the mission. Amazing! That was incredible, sir. I mean, the Griffith one. All satellite control centers and antennas have been destroyed. This should weaken Fenrir's microwave weapon. Archelon Fortress is the final obstacle standing between us and total victory, sir. We've advanced within striking distance of Archelon Fortress. Fenrir, the whole reason they started this war is being made right here on this base. It's our duty to wipe this base clear off the map. The HPM has been transported to Archelon Fortress from Cobalt Cave, and it appears it has already been fitted to Fenrir. The weapon works by emitting microwaves from both Fenrir and Archelon Fortress to create an overlapping field effect, detonating all fuel caught in between. Fly too slow for too long, and you'll be tracked by the targeting system. If you don't escape quickly, your fuel tank will explode. Thankfully, the targeting system has been impaired by the destruction of the satellite targeting facility at Cobalt Cave. Even with the targeting system impaired, the HPM still poses a threat. Be careful. We've also received intel that the Archelon Fortress is equipped with the same type of shock cannon employed on the Gleipnir. Sir, we've succeeded in freeing Aurelia. The war should have already been over for us. But someone has to put an end to this. Just me? As I wrote down the words that would reveal the truth to the world, I couldn't help but feel uneasy. It said that the only true winners in any war are those who achieve what they intended. Diego Navarro had left Aurelia's capital in defeat, yet his goal of increasing arms exports had been achieved. It seemed as though he may be the true victor in this war. After returning to his homeland, it appears that he now plans to unveil the ultimate weapon before his countrymen. Satellite images of the Archelon Fortress will provide the backdrop for his speech to the world. Such audacity must come from his confidence in this ultimate weapon, Fenrir. There's no such thing as a foolproof plan, I whispered to myself as I watched the sun slowly wheel across the sky overhead. Even the country's hero, still in the heat of battle, hadn't returned home for the celebration of victory. The Southern Cross will ensure Navarro's plan ends in failure. Ain't that right?
attack probably came from Center Earth HPM. Your fuel tank and drill sensors will be displayed on the MPG. The MPG will display any increase in fuel temperature. Watch it closely. with the same type of optical camouflage as the Airborne Fortress. However, with Morelia's satellite surveillance system back online, we should be able to track its position. Although the tracking is far from perfect, please bear that in mind when attacking. Try to keep the temperature low. 
Fortress is moving. That's the same shot cannon that was on the airborne fortress. We can't allow Lathap to remain in possession of that kind of weapon. Do what it takes to destroy the shot cannon. Shot cannon firing preparations complete. A killer three, lower your altitude. Get ten seconds. Archelon and Diego Navarro's beloved weapon, Fenrir, were ripped by explosions and engulfed in flames. While these images flashed on the screen, the eyes of the press watched as the enraged citizens of Laysath stormed in on commanding officer Diego Navarro. When the rage of the thousands had finally subsided, it is said that there was nothing left but the shattered remains of Fenrir. It's ironic that the stage for the unveiling of his greatest triumph would be his ultimate undoing. When it was all over, I tried to get an interview with the Southern Cross, only to find that he had already returned to Cape Aubrey. He said he's never really liked hot weather. Eugene Solano, the young radio operator, answered sheepishly. 
peace had returned to Griswold, and it was now covered in the colors of the Christmas season. I went ahead and bought myself a figure of Santa, the kind that I could only find here. Albert, I thought you couldn't stand the Southern Hemisphere. A fellow reporter said to me as he saw the Santa figure, a memento of this Southern Hemisphere of backward seasons. I like the design, I said as I embarrassingly showed it to him. It bore the emblem of the Southern Cross. <laughs>